What we do is, if you are, if your back is facing to us, I would like you to get up, pick up your chair, and, and orient it such that you're able to see me, okay? Uh, don't sit with your back facing me, yeah? Because initially what we'll do is, we'll run through a session for about, uh, about an hour, where we will actually uh, run through a presentation, right? So that's, that's what we'll do today. So, uh, how many teams do you have? If you are a member of a team, only one member of each team raises their hand. Only one member of each team. So, how many teams do we have? Raise your hand if you are part of a team. Okay? So, only one member of each team raises the hand. Only one member. So, we have one, two, three, four, five, six. And so, you will need to go and register your team on, on, on a URL that we have sent out. Does anyone know what that URL is? Does anyone know? I'm gonna, and, and, and I would love to have you, all of you, make a note of that, okay? So I'm gonna give it to you in just a second. What you have to do is, you have, it's a simple form. All of you guys know how to use a form. Just log in into that, it's, a, it's like a website. You go to the website, and you have to enter your information, because I see only two San Jose teams that have actually entered their information. Is anyone receiving the emails from our email group? Who is not, who, who is not receiving the emails? from our email group. Who's not receiving the emails? Looks like everybody's receiving the emails. Who's, who's, who's got access into the Facebook group? Anybody? Who's got access to the Facebook group? Okay. So I'm going to give you the URL. So here is the URL. And uh, yes. That's okay. If you are the only one in your team, it's okay. And as long as you have members to your team, and if you don't have um, team members that are part of your team. If you are a solo member, then what you should do is you should go out and recruit people, recruit kids to join your team. Get your friends, get your friends in your school, in your class. Get them to join your fantastic team. Go and sell yourself a little bit. You know, what should be building, okay? So here's the URL. Everybody, okay, you can either put it in your head, or you can put it on your phone, or you can write it on a piece of paper. Let's see a show of hands. Who heard me? Who heard me? Okay, I see a few kids who are kind of falling asleep because I'm like a pretty sleepy guy out here and everybody's falling asleep. I need to throw some candy to wake you up, but I did not bring any candy today. So I'll be walking around and maybe doing a Facebook poke to wake you up. Facebook poke, will that work to wake you up? Facebook poke, anybody knows what that is? Will it wake you up? No, not quite. I'm going to give you the URL now. It's tinyurl.com, tinyurl.com slash enter your idea, okay? tinyurl.com slash enter your idea. Let's see, http colon slash slash www.tinyurl.com slash enter your idea. You have a question? Um, yeah, what's the Wi-Fi for me to start here? Wi-Fi. Yes. Um, Mr. Randall, would you have the Wi-Fi password to all you have to do is open a browser. If you open a browser, you should see. First of all, did you did you try to connect to the help? It's tinyurl.com. Yes, thank you, thank you, Alok. I'll introduce you Alok in just a second. Why do you do that? Anybody remembers me? 
Anybody remembers me? Okay. So, so my son Shivam, you know, he started this back in Saratoga last year. And uh, so Shivam has been running this in Saratoga. And this year, how many locations do we have? Anybody wants to take a guess? How many locations do we have? Three. Three, two, one. How many locations do we have? Name the three. Smart Alec. Okay, I'll take that. Okay, we have a city called here. San Jose. San Jose, thank you. Okay, how about you? Silicon Valley, yes. Yes, we are running it in Silicon Valley. It's the Silicon Valley Coders Club. Absolutely, that's the right answer. I know you got the answer. I know you have it. I'm going to give someone else a chance. Someone else. Someone else. Is someone called someone else right there? Yes. San Jose, San You're cheating, dude. You are reading up there. But that's a smart way to do it. That's a smart way to do it. Okay, so um, I have one more question for you. How was it so far? Were you learning? Were you learning enough? Yeah. You were learning? How was Miss Dhana Tawar as she was running through the class? Was it informative? Yeah. Let's see a show of hands. Was it really, really good? Yeah. Come on, everybody. It's uh, Saturday afternoon. I know you guys are watching March Madness right now. Is Duke lost yet? Anybody watch, watching March Madness? Anybody? No, you guys are running March Madness on your laptops, I know it, you're not listening to me, I can, I, can, I can feel it, I can feel it. Any upset happening, anybody? Nobody knows, my team, my team is playing later today, 4.45, 4.45 p.m. And who's my team? Any guesses? Which is my team that is playing? You. No. You got. Oh, oh my god, this kid deserves something really special, how do you know? You know, because I picked you can too. You, know, you picked you can too? Are we going to beat Kansas today? Yeah, are you kidding? I love you, I love you. What's your name? Zane. Zane. You know, we did that. As a seventh seed and a ninth seed, we have gone all the way to the championship. We have won it. Maybe tonight is the night. We don't know. I'm going to dive out just a little bit. 1999, we played Duke. Duke and UConn. Duke was the number one seed. We were supposed to win it all with three NBA players. And we had only one NBA player. Well, future NBA players. We had one NBA player, which was Rick Hamilton. Anyone remembers Rick Hamilton? Played for the Pistons. We beat Duke and we've got our first national championship in 1999. But I'm diverging, I'm gonna come back to the topic here. Okay, that's all we have, so let's see what else. So here is the format. Okay, everybody please listen to me. Everybody close your laptops, close your laptops, everybody. Okay, I have one, one final thing to say, close your laptops, push it down. Everybody, push your laptops, close it, yes, thank you. So here's the thing, going forward, today is a very important day. Why is today a very important day? Why is today a very important day? Yes. We are coding, yes. Sorry? About the same, yes. It's, it's the right answer, we are coding. Because we have finished our learning process of what it takes to pitch and build a business plan, right? Have you done that? Who's built a business pitch so far? Huh? Who is? What? Have you, have you built your business plan yet? Yes, you have. Have you come out here and presented? All of you came out and presented. Super. So now we are moving on to phase two. Phase two of our program. And what is phase two of our program? Anybody wants to tell me? Computer science. Computer science, yes. And what are we going to do in phase two? Someone else? Someone else? Yes. Programs. Programs, yes. So you have a project. Do we have a project as part of your phase one? We all have project. Who does not have a project? Who does not have a project? You all have creative ideas. You have built a project. And now, as part of phase two, we will actually start the programming, the coding, the computer science aspect of your class, right? That begins now. But, you know, when you, when you were little babies, so just go back to the time when you were little babies. When you were little babies, you were sitting by, by your little high chair and mommy was putting food into your mouth, correct? Right? Are we going to do that here? Are we still babies? How do startups happen? Startups happen with a collaborative experience, right? Collaborative, nobody knows how to do it. They have an, all they have, all they have, shh, what do they have? What do they have when they build a startup? What do they have to start with? Anybody? An idea. An idea, beautiful, that's the right answer. This kid is smart. They have an idea, that's all they have. And they have brain power, that's all they have. And you have, all of you have ideas, you have a brain power, right? This little girl here, what's your name? Saniga. Saniga, what grade are you? Second. Second grade. Second grade, she, I can guarantee you this, she is much more intelligent than me standing here. I can guarantee you that. 
She is really smart. She is really smart. As a second grader, the brains are working like 100 times faster than somebody like a 20 year old me standing here. I'm only 20 years old. Anybody believes that? So, so she is super intelligent and all of you are super intelligent here and your brain power, you have an idea, you have the brain power, now you have to build a product, right? You have to build a product. That's exactly what startups do. All they have in Silicon Valley, this economy is thriving because of all the startups. We have Facebook, we have Google, we have Tesla. Is Tesla, which is the new model car that Tesla is coming out with? Yes. Model X. Model X came out already. Model 3. Alright, Model 3. So how did that come out? You know, Tes Tesla is innovating. They had an idea to build an electric car and then they had engineers who came up together and they started building that product. So that's exactly what we will all do. We have to build a product and we won't be putting you on a high chair and spoon feeding you, right? So what we will do is today, we have Alok here. A big round of applause for Alok for joining in. Let's give him a big round of applause. So Alok works in the high tech. He is a geeky engineer like me. And in Silicon Valley, geeks are rock stars. In engineers are rock stars, right? Anyway, so uh, he comes from the high tech background. He runs F3 Learning, and it's an academy where he, he teaches kids like you coding. How do, how do you build a product? How do you build an app? All the different steps involved. So today, what we will do is we will run through, and, and, and I really thank Alok for spending time with us. Alok will walk through a deck. He's been working pretty hard yesterday and today. We kind of lined up, uh, we talked to him on Friday, and here he is today, uh, coming out to present to you. So today what we'll do is, no spoon feeding, remember, no spoon feeding. It'll be a collaborative experience where your team will kind of figure out what you need to do, and then when you are kind of stuck, you come to us and say, I'm stuck, and I need some help. And we'll provide you the right mentorship to help you out. So that's how we'll approach this. You know, we can sit and teach you programming for the next a year long, right? You, you can keep learning it, but until you start actually building a product, it's not exciting. It's not really very exciting, right? So the idea behind the phase two is collaborative learning experience like startup, not putting you all in a high chair and spoon feeding. Is that okay? Is that okay? Do we have a deal here? Which means a lot of self-learning, which means a lot of self-learning. And how will we do the self-learning? How will we do the self-learning? So we'll provide you some tips. You know, there is, there is, there is so much, has anybody heard of Khan Academy? Khan Academy. Yes, all of you have heard it because we learn it in the schools. We will learn it just like that, you know. You will, all three of you as a team will sit down and figure out, well, we are trying to do this. How do we do this? What, what, so initially, what software do I install to build an app, right? And then all the different steps involved. Yes, there are many tools in the market. We can pick something that you like, that you're familiar with. And then there are tutorials for these tools. There are videos, folks have written tutorials, you'll be reading through, you'll be all sharing ideas, and you start building something. You are, when you're stuck, you know, you have met uh, uh, Sivakami. She was here teaching a class a few weeks ago. So Sivakami will be back next Saturday, and all of us will help you when you get stuck. We will figure out how exactly. So every Saturday we'll run a two-hour class, every Saturday. You will have laptops. If you have a laptop from home, bring your laptops. Who has a laptop at home? Okay, okay, so uh, I think most teams, which team does not have a laptop at home? Uh, a team member, a team, four or five kids who does not have a laptop at home. Okay, all of you have laptops at home, so maybe we will not need the laptops. I'm going to pass on that burden to Randy, that we may not need the laptop, because you should use the laptops at your home. You have it installed, and then you start building your application on that. So today we will provide you insights. Alok is going to talk about which software to download and some of the different steps involved with building the app that you have. And, and so you'll build the app over the next few weeks, right? So today is March, what day is it today? Oh, I thought you were going to tell me today is the third day of March Madness. No? no? Okay, so today is March 19th and June 11th is what? What is June 11th? June 11th. Close to your birthday, right answer. June 11th is what exactly? Last day of March Madness. Last day? Well, March Madness finishes on April 1st week something. Where we have the final four in the championship and hopefully it's mighty. But uh, what happens on June 11th? What is phase three of our program? The, um, the, um, the tech day, right? Yeah. Yes, the Silicon Valley tech day. That's happening on June 11th. Well, the venture capitalists are coming. No, no, we changed the date. We changed the date. It was 12th. We were running it in Saratoga, now we will run it in San Jose. 
and we have booked a, a room out and that information is there on your email. So talk to your parents. Your parents should be subscribed to the email and we have provided that information where exactly we'll be running. I kind of forget where it, where it is, but somewhere in San Jose. And I really appreciate the library team because they have actually booked that room for us. And it's going to be a fairly uh, large gathering. It'll be like 200 to 300 people on June 11th. Is anybody nervous or I'm really nervous around people? Is anyone else nervous like me? Anybody? No. Nobody's nervous, right? You guys are all like tigers ready to conquer the world. But June 11th, and we'll have lots of different panel discussions, and all of you will get to show your product. All of you. Some of you might be sitting on the sideline because from this group, we'll have our coaches pick out the top three or top four projects that will be pitching to the VC community, the venture capital community. And there will be a prize money of $1,000 given out to the best pitch, the best product built so far. And perhaps if the VC community gets excited, they might even fund you. So, we'll, so that's pitch fest is what we're going to have on that June 11th, along with panel discussions. And then some of, some of you other folks will be sitting on the sideline with a, like a booth format, like a table, and you will actually get to show your product. Does that sound exciting? Or is it boring? Cool. Okay. Come on. Come on, guys. Wake up. Wake up. Should we bring you some coffee, like hot coffee to drink? Yes. yes. Oh my God. Everybody wants hot, hot coffee. I wish I need some hot coffee too. Okay. Not eating. No, no eating and drinking here. Is that the rule? I'm supposed to drink coffee. Yeah. I'm, I, I eat coffee sometimes. I eat eat coffee. Question. Anybody has any questions before we get going? Anybody? Questions? Yes. Yes. I have yes. Absolutely. You can you can decide whichever tool, however you would like to run it. The, what we what we like to see is an end product. It doesn't matter what what uh, road you adopt to get there. Like like I, I came from uh, I had a meeting at Starbucks somewhere in uh, Milpitas. So Milpitas I would take 101. I could take 680. I would take 880. I could take the back roads. There are multiple ways to come here. The only thing that matters is I got here on time, right? I got here on time. That's the only thing that matters. So, doesn't matter which product you use and how you do it. Okay, any other questions? Any other questions? Okay, so with that, I'm going to turn the microphone over to Alok. Let's give him a big round of applause for Alok. Thank you, Vishin. So, everyone has registered? Or anyone is still waiting to register? Yeah, yeah, me. You still have to register? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. 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 Okay. Boy. Today, it's not the 
end of the work, you can do it later in the evening while you're watching a March Madness, or you can do it tomorrow when you wake up in the morning. You can do it anytime. While brushing your teeth, you can enter the data for the URL. So you can do all that kind of stuff later, okay? So let's let's get this class going. Right, thank you, Rishi. So it's very exciting you guys are here. Uh, this is what you know I figured out a year ago that I want to have kids the knowledge of education, uh, the coding, and you know how do you convert your idea to action. So as you see, you know today's session is how to build an app, and I have a team of couple of people, and we're going to introduce all these people, and some of these people are you know you see they are budding entrepreneurs. Uh, some of them are coaching and some are helping me in my initiative. So, about myself, I've been coding for 20 years. I graduated 20 years ago, I learned computer science. I grew up in India, I went to college in India. What I learned 20 years ago, it's still good, nothing has changed. We are just putting a different wrapper. We have made things easier to build apps, but it's exactly the same. So, computer science hasn't changed. Computers have gotten smaller, faster, better. These phones are the computers of future. Everything runs on that. We don't need big machines. So, Because I work in computer science, do you have a question? You are right. Yes, you get paid for eating, actually not eating, throwing gum. So, because I'm a computer, I'm a software engineer, I can travel to any country in the world and still write code. I don't need to learn a new language because computer science only knows what, what language does computer understand. Yes. Yes. Binary. Yeah, zeros and ones. You can be in Japan, Singapore, you know, Hawaii, or Netherlands. You can still write code. So I was lucky. I started working in India. <coughs> then I got to work in Japan. That was fun. I didn't know Japanese, but I still survived. Then I went to Singapore. It was amazing. We thought about fast track you know, for when we go through the Golden Gate Bridge and all that, what we are seeing here. I saw it in 98. 15 years ago, they had all those systems, the transit system, everything automated. We don't have to take out cash, no bills, no coins to take out a card, which works on trains, which works on buses everywhere. And finally, I landed in the USA, the land of dreams. Now, in USA, I have worked in six states. That's the beauty of, again, computer science or software engineering. You know, we write code. We can write from anywhere. I just love to go to a new place, just work from there. And then, you know, whenever I find next gig, I move to that new place. Isn't that awesome? You get to travel the world. The company pays for it. You are not paying for it. <laughs> so I started teaching my son. He's seven year old. He's sitting right over here. I started teaching uh, from second grade. He started learning Scratch and Mindstorm. Uh, and that kind of got me into that. How do we go and teach kids like you computer science? That led me to start teaching at Leland High School in San Jose. I got a call from principal. She said, can you teach computer science to these high schoolers? And more specifically, they wanted me to teach Python. I had never coded in Python before. Few days later, I was supposed to fly to India. I loaded my laptop with Python. I loaded an e-book. And there you go, I was coding in the flight, learning and coding, and by the time I came back two weeks later, I was a Python expert. So, it's so easy, the internet has made things so easy to write code. You get everything on the internet. <laughs> what do you need to write code? 
Can somebody guess? Yes. A computer. Yes. What else? Yes. Text editor. Good. Most important. What is the biggest thing you need before you write code? Oh, of course. No. <laughs> yes. Very good. We need a plan. We need an idea. We need a plan. So I also am a technology guy for Thaya Nation. My wife runs an online shop for jewelry and handicraft items. I thought, you know, how hard will it be just to sell anything? Don't underestimate. Selling is the hardest job in the world. Uh, you see someone selling outside a rose or you know something, it's not easy. It takes long, long hours. Because I know what people want. Exactly. But telling, selling people that this is what you really want, first you have to find out what people want. And then you should be able to sell. But if you don't have what people want, can you sell? Yes, you can. That's what you have to figure out how to sell. So, yeah, with the online jewelry store, I started looking into it. It turned out to be a huge thing. Everything, if you can write code for it, life will be easier. You don't have to do anything on your store. Finally, it led me to found F3 Learning. So, F3 Learning, I have elementary, third, fourth, fifth graders, middle schoolers, up to eighth grader, I teach them coding. The Scratch, Mindstorm, Python. So middle schoolers, six to eight graders, they are learning Python. They learn the introductory Python, they learn the web development, so they are making apps. And now, they're gonna make mobile apps. Communication. Why do we have communication in the learning? What's the reason? Can somebody guess? Yes. We need to communicate with other people to build your app. Yes. We as a geek, we are very bad. We work hard, we do the best job, we build the best apps, but we can't tell people, hey, my app is best, or why is it best? So to help, Students like you, how do you communicate what you have built? That's the idea behind communication. I have been coaching with Dale Carnegie Trading. If anyone read about the book, uh, How to Win Friends and Influence People? Yeah, so it's an awesome book. I coach there occasionally. I am a volunteer coach, but I do coach whenever I get time. I don't coach kids, but I teach uh, grown-ups. So that's the thing I'm bringing to the kids. You, know, if you guys can learn those things you know, at this age. You will be doing awesome in the future. So with that, you know, I have the next, uh, my assistant, Rahul. Rahul, you want to talk about yourself? So Rahul is one of my students. He has been learning Java and Python. He is, in, uh, he is going to talk about, can you talk about you? So, uh, I'm sort of low key teaches on Leland. I go to Leland. I'm in 10th grade, even though I'm pretty short. Um, so, um, for computer science experience, well, I'm taking the, um, well, not at school, because they don't offer it to 10th graders, because Leland's kind of weird like that, but I'm taking AP Computer Science at home, learning from Mr. Oak right here. And I'm also taking the, the computer science course offered at school, which teaches Python. So, like, Basically, I started doing computer science in like third grade, I guess. So, like every third grader back then, Pokemon was a thing. <laughs> so I was like, I wanted to play Pokemon, but I don't want to pay the money for the game. So I was like, hmm, how do I make my own Pokemon game? I never, I never like got to that level. Like I never like really did Scratch that much. But I started doing Scratch, and that's how I got into computer science. So like, and like ever since then, I've been probably just learning computer science on my own. Cause, and so uh, after Scratch, I did the uh, FLL, and you guys do that, and you do hear you do FLL in the nice. yeah. That's great. So uh, yeah, I did uh, FLL, and that was like literally, that was basically what this is about. 
So, um, in FLL, you have two parts. You have like the robot, you build the robot, you program the robot, it does a task. And you also have this entrepreneurship thing. So, basically, it gives you a problem. Like, I don't know, a few years ago, it was transportation. And so, uh, basically, you have to come up with an idea to solve problems. Like, for transportation, a problem is gas, right? Cars just like spew out carbon dioxide and clogs up the air. And so, you have to figure out a way to solve that problem. And you have to pitch it to the judge to make it seem like your idea is the one that will work. If you win, if you win that, like the robot plus the uh, that entrepreneur, I don't even know what to call it, the entre entrepreneurship thingy, uh, you get to go to nationals. Unfortunately, we were not good enough entrepreneurs to do that. We won the robot thing, but we did not win the entrepreneur thing, so we did not go to nationals. It was a real shame. Uh, but uh, after that, um, I started getting into Java, and so like ever since, and now I'm in our high school robotics team, and all we do there is like pitch ideas. So like what you're learning here is extremely important, even in your high school life. Like so, um, the only way we're actually able to build a robot is like we don't make the parts ourselves. We have to get sponsors to give us the parts, and we have to make sure our school is the most attractive place for the sponsors. Like if we like do something bad for it, like, I don't even, I don't know. But if we don't pitch our idea well enough, we don't get the money for the parts, and so our entire high school robotics team will fall apart, we'll like, lose, and that's not a good thing. So, like, these skills you learn here, entrepreneurship are really important in like, everyday life. So yeah. That's me. So besides, you know, his academic stuff, Rahul is also, he plays calm soccer. Uh, he also speech and debate. You know, he is a multi-talented, you know, person. And I'm very impressed and I'm proud to have him as my Java student. Next we have is, uh, this is my son Ayush. Ayush, you want to come and uh, talk about? Once your project decided, 
then just start thinking how your pro product pro project is going to work and how it's going to navigate from one place to another place. So, uh, so that's why just love coding, enjoy coding. That's it. Thank you. Here's going to test our knowledge of how many apps you know. So, raise your hand if you know, and we're going to know the app, and I'll pick on you if I like you. <laughs> okay. What app is this? Ooh. I like you. Geometry Dash. Great job. Oh. What the? I don't even know what that yeah. is either. Oh, uh, what's that? Waze. What? Waze. Oh, uh, what does it do? It, it basically, it's basically an app. Oh, All right. cool, I didn't know that. Blue oh, girl oh, 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 on the back. Oh. Is it still on the app store? No. no. Okay, why well, is it on the app store? Okay, I'll give you the real reason. My phone is cracked. This game is a big part of that. <laughs> so, what is this? <laughs> oh, you right here. Do you play Minecraft? You like building. Okay, that's cool. That's cool. Okay. Come on! Of course. You know, uh, one second. So the reason, you know, it's uh, the words are there. We can't erase them. By copyright law, by law, we cannot manipulate anyone's logo. So that's why you know, this is an example. Yeah. Don't mess with someone's you know, logo, someone's images. If you are messing, you will be in trouble. Yeah. Very, very big trouble. Yeah. Guys. With permission or without permission? Yeah, you're supposed to say, like copyright laws. It's yeah. yeah. not really a good idea. Okay, well, next one. This is a tough one.
Can you make a logo? 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 Yeah, logo. Yes. Trademark. Trademark. Very good. Copyright. Yeah. Okay, copyright. Right. Do you hear any, you know, some kind of games have like voices or, you know, sounds? Does it have like music? Yeah. Is it? Graphics. Graphics. Very good. Yeah, so an uh, app can have a lot of different things. Right? It's just not, you know, one thing. When we build an app, we have to think about all those things. So yeah, the music, images, graphics, colors. We want it very colorful so it doesn't look people that don't get bored. Right? Make it very colorful. It's like a painting, art. Yes. Graphics and colors are always going to be like, yeah. Graphics can be, you know, just plain simple. Graphics are always graphics. So graphics will have colors. Right? You have dialogues, people talking.
Great. Can you go to the nearest exit? The ambulance drone is almost there. Okay. I'm outside. I'll be talking through the drone now, so you can put down the phone. Socrates, pick up the drone. Bring it to your father. You're doing great. Okay, pull the green bit. Now place the pads on your father's chest. Good, I can see that the pads are properly applied. Joanna, please stay clear of your father. We'll take it from here. infrastructure with a network of drones capable of saving lives. At over 100 km per hour, these drones create an ultra-fast response system capable of increasing this survival chance from 8% to 80%. This is because the ambulance drone is not affected by current road infrastructure, but is capable of flying in a straight line, bringing down the average response time of an ambulance from 10 minutes to 1. We developed a new type of drone that is capable of folding into a very compact position. The drone essentially becomes a flying toolbox for your emergency supplies. <coughs> Using advanced production techniques such as 3D printed microstructures and carbon fiber frame construction, we were able to achieve a very lightweight design. Our iterative process using design sketching, laser cutting, and CNC milling allowed us to rapidly visualize our ideas. The result is an integrated solution that is clear in its orientation and friendly in appearance. Let's use drones for a good purpose. Let us use drones to save lives. Yeah. 
If they don't have laptop, then we need money. Oh, good point. He said advertising the app. To build the app, you don't have money. Right? Don't you want to advertise it? So yes, you got to have money for that. What else do you need money for? connections were coming from China. And the reason they were coming from China, why were they coming from China? Okay, yes, he hired someone, he gave him you know, half the money he was making and he outsourced it. So if you are smart, you can find someone else who can write code for you and you can sell the app. So how, what are the steps for building an app? First of all, you need to identify the features. What do you want in your app? Right. Write down the list on a paper. Pen and paper is your best friend when you want to plan your app. Right. So make feature lists for your apps. Now once you have the feature list, you can start sketching. Take a pen and paper and say what screens you're going to have, what kind of things you're going to have in your app. Just draw some diagrams. Right. You click on something, what's going to happen? Click on that. So let's say you know, if you are using the Waze app, you know Waze app, you enter your address, so that's an input. How do you want to enter your address? Right? It shows in the top, sometimes it's in the bottom. Make a screenshot of it. Now if once you enter the address, you want to show the map, right? destination from your current location, those, those are again more screens. So good idea to just draw a screenshot. Right? Ask people around you who can help. Now you can come up with the app, but do you know how to build it? No. Right? That's why we are in this class. We want to learn how to build the app. So ask the people, you know, ask your parents, ask your brother, sister, uncle, aunt, you know, anyone you know who says I can I know how to write code, ask them I need help. Can you help with this? If they say no, I don't know coding, <laughs> you got to ask, what are you gonna do if they say I don't know coding? Find someone else. How, where are you gonna find someone else? Yes. No? Ask them, do you know someone who can who knows how to write code? Okay, don't leave them without getting a person who can help you. Right, so ask people around, give them the title of coach, call them coach. Who plays soccer here? Oh, a lot of soccer players. Baseball. Okay, who plays baseball? You play baseball too? No, I play badminton. Badminton, cool. Wow, what a cool. Do you guys, do you guys have a coach? Yeah, so same here, we need a coach to help us write the code. And the code. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah, I am getting old. I am, what is called, outdated. Yeah, you got to find a new coach. What if I'm already done and ask Can we Okay, so I'll talk about that. So once you find a coach, show them your screenshot, show them your feature list and say, okay. Show them, you know, this is what I want to build. Ask them to help. Once the coach says, okay, good to go. Start writing the code. What do you do after you build the app? Yes. Yeah, put it on the app store and start making money. Isn't that awesome? Money. Money, yeah. 
So how do we? So if you, how many of you have done coding before? Okay. Well, about half of you know coding. Some are still new. So if you are new, I would say you can use Scratch. Go to code.org, or you can go to scratch.mit.edu. It's an excellent site. Code.org also has some good site. So you can start uh, learning coding there. If you want to build mobile apps, how many of you want to build mobile app? Android or? 1, 2, 3, 5, 6, 7. OK, not, not. Who wants to build a mobile app? Yeah. Who knows Scratch and want to build a mobile app? Yeah, so App Inventor is a good way to get started. It's for Android apps. But you will get to learn how to build a mobile app. So, App Inventor. Thank you. Now, if you are, you know, saying I'm done with App Inventor, for advanced programmer, I have a couple of, you know, you should start with HTML, CSS3. I bet. Have you built a website? Yeah. What does your website do? It's like a despicable What does it do? It has all the movies and can do all this stuff. Uh, I know CSS2 is a cascading sound sheet. Nice. Awesome. So that's good. You know, he, he knows. Uh, for those who are interested, this would be a good starting point. Learn to write. Code Academy have a lot of good courses. That would be a good starting point. I have done those courses. So I, I love them. Sorry? Yeah, Khan Academy also started it. Yes, you are right. Uh, yeah, yeah, I can hear good one too. Very good. Yes. Oh, I think I'm missing a page. Yeah, it's called Cadby. Oh, this is right. Thank you. So, now you know, he was saying you can show some videos and all that, but what if you want to play games? If you want to build interactive, you got to learn JavaScript. So there is another course for JavaScript. Uh, and Code Academy has uh, lessons for JavaScript. It's used if you want to introduce interactivity. You know, you want to have buttons, you want to be able to run animations. Right? If you have some of those sites, you want to use JavaScript. Image, who wants to learn how to make images, create images? Oh, Photoshop, I've done GIMP. Yeah, Photoshop is oh, GIMP. Yes, so you can create images, you can manipulate. So GIMP is a good, it's free tool. I've been using it for more than you know, 15 years. And this is the best tool. I don't pay a single penny. Paint, yeah, yeah, you have uh, paint too. Right, right. Sometimes you know you have images, you want to change the background. Right? It's daytime, you say, oh, it did not, it wasn't daytime, it was nighttime. You want to make the background dark. So if you want to do advanced manipulation, game is a good tool. Python. Oh, I like Python do you know Python? Mm -hmm. Awesome, awesome. Do you know Python? <laughs> nice. Oh, we have a lot of examples. That's Greenfoot. That's Greenfoot. Greenfoot? Yeah. Very good. So yeah, uh, if you want to learn Python. Now Python is just a you know, basic coding language. You can also build web pages or mobile apps using Python. YouTube. So we have two frameworks. Flask and the Django framework. You can build apps, full-blown apps, like you know, those who are saying, you know, who are done with App Inventor, I would have them use Flask and Django framework. Anything else you guys want to, yes? Um, 
Anything I missed? So for voice recording, you have, you know, there are microphones, there are audio recording software on the lab, on your laptop. Are we also programming So, not in this one? It's a good question. You know, you talk about Swift and Android. There, there are two things. If you want to build an app, which can be used both by Android and iOS, it's a good idea to stick to HTML5 and CSS. Right, because then you can have the same app deployed to both Apple and Android stores. Right, so keep that in mind. Now, you may lose some major features with HTML5 because if you want to use some of the features which are specific to iPhone or specific to Android phone, you may not be able to do that. In that case, you would have to you know, do some uh, customization. Cordova is a good framework which allows you to build platform neutral apps, right? and then it will generate you packages which you can deploy in app stores. And with that end, I think we can just go to the tutorial. So we are going to use App Inventor today to build some sample apps. So first thing we need to do is have an emulator. So emulators are software programs which you run on your laptop, but they look just like your phone. App Inventor is used for Android only. It won't give you iPhone app. But if you are able to do App Inventor, iPhone app is not going to be that difficult. And you can always ask questions and I can provide you additional resources if you want to get into iOS specific apps. And there are two tutorials. Uh, the link is here. You can, there are a lot of tutorials in there. You can just start coding on it. Uh, for today's session, we have two, and you can start coding. If you have questions, just ask any of the coaches. We're going to help you. And if you want to learn about advanced stuff, call me, call any of us. We'll help you figure out additional resources. The last one is if you want to deploy to Google Play Store. The same app you build, you want to deploy, there's a link to it. You can use those to find the steps. Any questions? Okay, you can get started on the tutorials. Wait. What's the password? It's not working? Yeah. Okay, let's take a look. Maybe you can switch or you know you can work in someone else. There is one on the back side. Oh, okay.